Now we need to talk about the structures of the brain that lie underneath the cerebral cortex. And for this course, let's just refer to these structures as the central core. There are other ways of dividing up and understanding the brain, but this seems like the simplest to me and more appropriate for a general psychology course. So looking at this diagram, we are looking at all the different structures of the brain beneath the cerebral cortex, and we're going to start talking about the brain stem first on the bottom right of the screen. The brain stem is the oldest part of the brain from an evolutionary perspective. It's located at the top of the spinal cord, and I've drawn it here so you can see all the various parts of the brain stem. But this drawing is inaccurate. If it were drawn accurately, the brain stem would be shoved up higher under the brain and the pons of the brain stem would actually be forming the bridge between the two halves of the cerebellum. For our purposes, this is easier and clearer. You can see all the different parts of the brain stem. So the brain stem is composed of the midbrain, the pons, the medulla, and the RAS. And if you look over on the left side of the screen, you see RAS refers to reticular activating system. Let's take the midbrain first. All sensory information except olfaction or your sense of smell travels up the spinal cord where there are reflex centers for sneezing, coughing, and vomiting. These are reflexive behaviors under control of the midbrain and if you think about it, it's evolutionarily adaptive. Sneezing, coughing, and vomiting are ways to quickly remove toxic substances from our bodies. Beneath the midbrain you have the pons, which literally is the Latin word for a bridge, and again the pons forms a bridge between the two halves of the cerebellum when the brain is drawn accurately. But here's what you should know about the pons. It's important for pain perception and it's important in our sleep-wake cycle. Interestingly, there is a syndrome called locked-in syndrome that occurs when there's severe damage to the pons, and it's a tragedy when it occurs, but basically the individual is paralyzed, and the only part of the body that can be moved are the eyelids, and so the individual, still able to function cognitively, can only communicate by, say, blinking once for yes or twice for no. That's locked-in syndrome, and it's caused by severe damage to the pons. Beneath the pons is the medulla, and this structure is absolutely essential for our survival. If someone is hung by the neck till dead, a horrific ending, then death is the result of damage to the medulla. It controls our breathing, it controls our heartbeat, it controls our blood pressure, and so on. Looking at the brainstem, you can see that I've drawn red lines up and down the brainstem, and those represent the RAS, or reticular activating system. Now many references correctly identify this as the reticular formation. Either is correct. I like to use the term reticular activating system to help you remember its function. Think of the word activating. When there's severe damage to the reticular activating system, the RAS, then the individual may very well be in a permanent coma. If you were to go in and electrically or chemically stimulate the reticular activating system, then the individual will experience increased arousal. So those are the structures of the brain stem. I want you to know the structures. I want you to know a little bit about their functions. And I want you to know that this is the oldest part of the human brain from an evolutionary perspective. Now let's look at other structures of the human brain that lie beneath the cerebral cortex. When you look at the very center of the brain, I've drawn a circle that's kind of an aqua color and put TH in it. That represents the thalamus. When you think of the thalamus, I want you to think of a sensory relay station. Again, sensory relay station. All sensory information traveling up the spinal cord to the brain will go first to the thalamus and then to other parts of the brain. So you have vision. Sensory information travels from the eyes along the optic nerve to the thalamus, and from there it goes to the visual cortex or the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. Or you have information traveling from the ears along the auditory nerve to the thalamus, a relay station, and from there it goes to the temporal lobe and other parts of the brain. Beneath the thalamus, you have the hypothalamus. Hypo literally means beneath, so you can guess where the hypothalamus is located. It's located beneath the thalamus. 
The hypothalamus is involved in a variety of different types of behavior. We'll talk about the hypothalamus more throughout the semester. But right now, I want you to associate the word homeostasis with the word hypothalamus. Homeostasis refers to maintaining an optimal level of any physiological requirement. For instance, optimal levels of fluids in the body, optimal levels of nutrients, maintaining an optimal body temperature. And these are all activities in which the hypothalamus is involved. That's all you need to know about the hypothalamus right now. We'll come back to it later in the semester when we talk about motivation. Finally, I want you to look at the structures that form a ring around the thalamus and the hypothalamus. These are the structures of the limbic system. The limbic system is the second oldest part of the human brain from an evolutionary perspective. It evolved about 200 million years ago. It is composed of the septal area, the amygdala, and the hippocampus. We'll talk a great deal about the hippocampus later in the semester because it's important for memory and we will be discussing the topic of memory. But right now, the limbic system is very important for our emotional experiences. And so there have been research studies where someone would place a microelectrode in the amygdala of an animal. Someone did it with a bull. And the animal became enraged. Turn off the stimulation and the animal is sweet as anything. So for a general psychology course, I want you to know that the limbic system is composed of the amygdala, the septal area, the hippocampus. It's the second oldest part of the brain from an evolutionary perspective. In fact, you may actually have a quiz question or a question on the final exam where you're asked which of the following structures is oldest from an evolutionary perspective or the newest from an evolutionary perspective. And answering that question requires not only that you know the parts of the brain stem, the parts of the limbic system, the lobes of the cerebral cortex, but the sequence in which those various structures evolved. The brain stem is the oldest, followed by the limbic system, followed by the cerebral cortex. Know this and you should be fine answering that question. I should mention that the hypothalamus is considered by some experts to be part of the limbic system and it is considered by others not to be part of the limbic system and I promise I won't give you a confusing question about that. Finally, we need to talk about the cerebellum, a structure at the back of the brain. It actually looks like two miniature cerebral hemispheres. The cerebellum is important for coordinating motor movement, particularly motor movement that involves rapid directional shifts, like threading a needle. And if there's damage to the cerebellum, the result can, of course, be uncoordinated motor movement.